Estamos de vuelta en un show con Tuti. Gracias por su sintonía. Jess Winner hoy ha estado con nosotros eh, y no es suficiente el tiempo. Quiero más. <risa> Gracias de verdad por estar aquí con nosotros. Antes de la pausa, Jess, eh, vimos una encuesta que hicimos en las calles, principalmente a mujeres, para preguntarles cómo ellas creían que estaba su autoestima. Viste las respuestas, más o menos y en promedio, por si alguien se lo perdió, se daban un 7 de 10 en, en promedio. ¿Qué opinas tú de esto? I'm not surprised. I wish I was, but I'm sí. not. I think that women are still getting comfortable with the fact of describing themselves as confident, of really feeling confident. Because I think in our minds we're always waiting for the moment when. When I lose weight, when I have a you know, family, when mm -hmm. I have a new job, when I have what comes next. And we don't live in the moment now and take stock of what we are right now. So sometimes it's very uncomfortable for women to say, I feel good because their mind is thinking about all the things they haven't done yet. So I think we have to keep talking to women about how to change their view of success, okay. how to change their view of confidence, and teach them that it's not just about like always being happy and always being perfect, but it is really about loving who you are and being in relationship with the people around you, like really feeling good about your life. Que hay de, de esta enseñanza que nos han, nos han dado en algún momento, yo creo que ya las nuevas generaciones han cambiado un poco, pero es Tienes que ser humilde. Si te dicen qué linda estás, sí. no, yo no, no soy linda. No, qué bien lo hiciste, no, no, fue no sé qué. No aceptar tus logros y lo, y lo brillante que eres. ¿Cómo combatimos esto? Have you ever given a compliment to a little kid? Sí. Right. And what do they say? Thank you. Right? <laughs> They're like so willing to take the compliment. Sí. And somewhere along our life, we feel like we're bad if we acknowledge what we're good at. Sí. And so there is a difference between confidence and humility. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that confidence needs to be arrogance. I don't think that, I think if you're confident and you're judging somebody else, that's not confidence, that's insecurity. But if you're confident because you know I have my education, I'm, I like to read, I'm curious, I like to you know, put out things in the world, that could be confidence, that has nothing to do with you. So confidence isn't about a competition. And sometimes women feel like, oh, if you tell me I'm pretty, then I have to make you feel good. No, you can just appreciate somebody <laughs> sí. for thinking that they're beautiful. I always encourage people, say two things. You're beautiful and, and what else, right? You're beautiful and you're so much fun to be around. Mm -hmm. Or you're beautiful and you're so smart. Because you don't want to always just kind of give women the reinforcement that their beauty is all that they're valued for. Exacto. I, quiero, antes de que se nos termine el tiempo, hablar un poquito de tu trabajo en Guatemala. Eh, háblanos un poquito de chispa. Yo sé que esto no es solo en Guatemala, sino en el mundo entero. Mm -hmm. Pero háblanos un poquito de chispa y luego hablamos en Guatemala. Well, I have fallen in love, as I mentioned, with this program called Starfish. Sí. And in November, November 28th, there's going to be a Chispa celebration where we're bringing 100 different leaders, wow. girl leaders from around Guatemala, together to talk about what issues they can solve in their communities. And what's very important about this is that these are indigenous girls. These are girls who often are not seen in your media. Mm -hmm. They are not seen or spoken about publicly in the way that I believe that they are deserving. And this organization is really about helping them get education and access and opportunities so that they can create the lives that they want. And people in the United States will say, why are you working in Guatemala? Why not work in the United States? Yeah. But when I tell you and the people who are watching, Tudi, when you see this program and you see these girls in, in motion, they change their lives and they change the lives of the people around them. And I've never seen anything like it before in the 22 years that I've worked in this field. So I'm coming to watch. I'm going to bring some friends from American media down to see them. You know, I'd love to have you there. I mean, I'd sí, love to sí. see. My husband's going to come. Um, I think it's beautiful to watch solutions happen. And I'm very proud of this organization. And I hope to learn more about Guatemala and more about the indigenous people and how to help in any way that I can. Gracias por el cariño. Gracias por, por comprometerte eh, a transformar algo que yo sé que en Guatemala es un potencial gigante, que son nuestras niñas, yo lo sé. Y, y qué bueno que podamos hacer algo más grande y que nosotros, tú con, con lo que haces, yo desde lo que hago, cada quien en nuestro hogar, desde ser papás, desde ser maestros, desde ser vecinos, vecinas, podamos nosotros ir marcando una diferencia en la vida de nuestras chicas también, porque yo sé que traen unas ganas de ser diferentes, de marcar el paso y de escribir la historia, ¿cierto? Es la chispa, es la spark, chispa. Right? The chispa. Sí. <risa> exacto, exacto. Si tú tuvieras una varita mágica y pudieras cambiar... Algo en el corazón de todo el mundo, ¿qué cambiarías? Ooh, that's the best question I've ever been asked. <laughs> I think if there was one thing, it would be to remember that we are more alike than we are different. Okay. And if you think about that in business, in family, in love, in life, 
we would have a much kinder, more prosperous world. And that's what I hope to wave my magic <laughs> wand and create. <laughs> qué lindo. ¿De qué manera crees tú que, que en los medios de comunicación, ya que eh, yo de alguna forma sé que tengo una gran responsabilidad y trato de, de utilizarla bien, pero a, nive a nivel general, en, los, en las redes sociales, por ejemplo, que no hemos hablado, yo creo que es un punto importante, ¿de qué manera podemos hacer la diferencia? ¿Cómo cuidar a nuestras chicas también de cómo manejarse en las redes sociales? Well, we have to remember that we as individual social media users that sometimes we have platforms larger than men, many brands sí. we have an, an impact and so even if you have five followers or five million followers what you put out in the world matters so don't tweet or post negative things don't repost negative things use it as your own media empire think about it like your own empire put forward what you'd want to see out in the world because maybe they don't work for this show or they don't work for the big businesses but you have impact on your community and everything you say again everything you put out there girls are watching boys are watching our kids are watching so we get to create the world we want to see de qué manera nosotros también podemos um, a, a ver si suena bien porque a lo mejor no <risa> eh, dejar que se vea y que no se vea yo lo veo con mis hijas eh, hay cosas que digo esto no me gusta el mensaje y no las dejo ver es bueno no dejar ver o es mejor dejarlas ver y platicar el asunto Well, I think that's an individual question for okay. parents, pero what I would say <laughs> is that more conversation is necessary okay. because we, our kids are growing up digital natives. Sí. We've never experienced what they've experienced before. Cierto. So we can't assume to know what they know. And you have to remember that kids are connected through social media now. It's like oxygen to them. It's not an option, it's their life. So I think it's important for parents to say, let's talk about this, tell me why you like this. Mm -hmm. um, and if you see something and you don't agree with it, I think it's very fair to say, you know what? I'm the parent and I'm here to help kind of guide you and I don't think this is healthy. And have them tell you why. Why do they think it's healthy? You know, have a conversation about it. But I think at the end of the day, you're never going to be able to protect them. I always say, I don't know how you're going to translate this, but I always say <laughs> the toothpaste is out of the tube. If you can't put toothpaste back in the tube once it's out, sí, right? Sí. So social media is that way. So we have to work with what we have and always connect to our kids. It's when we close the door and don't look at what they're doing that sometimes they can be up to something that's dangerous. Yo te quiero agradecer mucho eh, estar hoy con nosotros, eh, dar este mensaje al mundo entero. Lo que has hecho es maravilloso. ¿Te imaginaste alguna vez ser este personaje que hoy eres? A tus 12 años, te lo no. soñaste, ¿no? No, but when I think about the 12 year old girl that sí. I used to be, I think she'd be very proud of me to be here and <laughs> to be, lo yeah, creo. <laughs> yeah, you know, and just to be doing something I love and helping, helping girls around the world. ¿Y qué, qué ves tú en el cambio? ¿Cuál es el principal cambio que tú ves en las chicas con las que has trabajado, a quienes le has llevado el mensaje? ¿Qué ves en ellas? ¿Cuál es el switch que hacen? The minute that we can educate a girl, her opportunities multiply 10 times the amount of what she had before. And we can't ever underestimate that. And I don't just mean always formal education in school. I also mean access to leaders and thinkers and people who are going to support her. The minute I see a girl get educated, I see her world change. And then I've worked long enough to see girls go through the process mm -hmm. and the people that they've become are fantastic. And so I feel like um, I get a blessing every time I just watch them get, you know, have education, support them and then let them fly. That's what education does. Gracias por hacerlo. Mm -hmm. Felicitaciones, bendiciones, que sigan los triunfos, que sigan los cambios, que sigan el romper paradigmas y el, y el hacer que todos sepamos lo valiosos que somos por lo que somos, nada más. Gracias, Jess. Un placer tenerte aquí en Guatemala. Gracias también. Gracias. Muy buen español. Aprendiendo español. Muy bien. Muy bien. You did it great. Lo hiciste muy bien. Y hasta aquí nuestro programa, amigos. Gracias por acompañarnos. Ojalá y hayan llegado mensajes muy puntuales, muy importantes a su corazón, porque de nosotros los adultos también depende nosotros transformar lo que estamos viviendo, lo que estamos pensando, cuestionarnos, para que nuestros hijos hagan lo mismo. Y así poco a poco va cambiando esto y podemos tener una sociedad más rica, llena de personas diversas, distintas, maravillosas, que tienen algo que aportar al mundo. Gracias por su sintonía y hasta la próxima.
Cuatevisión presentó.